and that's the first day of the second half of the year i know we've passed through trying times especially in this past week as a nation but we trust god and we also believe the best for our nation uh, this morning bring greetings from pastor francis it's fine is okay the family is fine they are well i want to believe that he's also watching us online this morning but he's very very fine he's in the united states so he's doing fine and he sends his greetings however he's not happy with us that we are not coming to church attendance has dropped very very low so please tell others that pastor and the pastorate is not happy with us for not coming to church anointing god's anointing does not leave when the set man leaves goes on leave god is always ever present scripture says that where two or three are gathered in your name that there he is in your midst so i believe god is here and this month for the real success seminar we're actually looking at the theme get educated and you'll see it says there is only one shortcut to success and um to bring the word to us to teach us this morning is one of our revered own is a doctor <laughs> i think he studied um, engineering in school but now he's into language engineering translating stuff into the local languages we already know him so I want to bring to the podium this morning as he teaches us this morning, Dr. Tunde Adegbola. Good morning, church. The last time I was here, I said, um, Pastor seems to put me here only when he's not around and he's done it again uh, I just hope he's watching and um, take the opportunity to thank him very much for yielding the pulpit to me like I always say I do not take it for granted I take it as a privilege and I thank him for it and thank God for the opportunity to bring the word uh, for me, it's a happy day. Uh, it's the middle of the year, and uh, it's for me every year. It's a year that it's a day that I give account to because it's my wife's birthday, uh, <laughs> and uh, I usually wake up on the first of July thanking God for the one wonderful woman God gave me as wife. Glory be to God. Uh, as was said, the theme for this month is get educated. And it says that there is only one shortcut to success. I studied a bit of mathematics in an attempt to become an engineer. And we learned that the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line. And that the idea, the idea of a shortcut is a road, a way, a channel, an avenue that you can take from one point to one point, which happens to be shorter than the usually taken road. Now, because it is not every time that you can create a way between this, uh, 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 via the straight line between two points. You find that most of the time when roads are made, there are lots of obstacles to avoid. And this usually makes it, uh, brings about a situation where the road to go, that, that, that's provided to go from one place to the other is not the shortest distance. But people will always look for shorter distances to any, between any two points. It's a natural human propensity. 
In fact, it is theorized and referred to as the uh, um, the, short, uh, the, the, the least effort principle. That when people do things, we always try to do it with the least effort. And it is a valid principle. In fact, I believe it is ordained by God. But sometimes these shortest distance, these uh, shortcuts do not actually solve the problem. And uh, there is an English proverb that says that the shortest way home is not always the quickest. But in the case of what we are discussing this morning, education as the only shortcut to success. What actually is meant is that education is the only way to success. There's no other way. Because it is the only way, it just, happens to, it just has to be the shortest way. And so that is what makes it the only shortcut. So it is from that point of view that I want us to look at the whole issue of education this morning and the need to get education. But with the privilege I have to speak first on this uh, topic, I think it is necessary to look critically at the whole idea of education, look, uh, try to uh, analyze it and get to really understand what education is so that we can see the, uh, the, the whole issue in context. So that even when we try to negotiate maybe seemingly shorter distances to education, we can, through knowing what education is, determine whether the efforts we are making will be useful or we are just wasting our time. Let's start by trying to define education, explaining what education is. Education can be described as the process of receiving and imbibing instruction and also giving instruction. Generally, you can say education is the process of receiving and imbibing instruction. Uh, but that's only one part of it, just only one side of the coin. There's also the uh, aspect of giving the instruction. And we are talking here of systematic instruction. Education could be at home. It can be in the larger community. It can be in school. It can be in a university, depending on the levels of the education. There are levels to education and the level of education will usually determine whether it's even in school, whether it's in a, a kindergarten gathering, whether it's in a university. Education could be formal, it could be non-formal, and it could be informal. Formal education is the type of education we receive in educational institutions, structured educational institutions, where the where the, um, the, the, the the time that it will take to acquire the education is determined ahead of time, in which there are clear learning objectives and there are defined support systems to promote the process of education. Formal education usually leads to some form of certification and we'll still talk about certification a bit later on. In formal education, usually the learner goes for it deliberately with intention to achieve certain learning objectives. 
and that is formal education. The process is highly structured. The time of education is defined. And when you are going in, you know how long it's going to take you to get the education. Well, in Nigeria, how long should be qualified? How long in the educational process? Not how long in time. If you need one year for education and you take education for three months and you take a break of two years, when you resume two years later, you will still spend the one year in education. Uh, so that is formal education. Non-formal education takes place outside a formal system. It could be regular, it could be intermittent. A lot of uh, the kind of education uh, for artisanal training is what uh, co comes under the ages of non-formal education. Unlike formal education, the time it takes to acquire what is needed may not be strictly defined. So that's why when you apprentice as a mechanic, I found out some time ago that uh, for the first few months, what you do is just fetch water for the wife of your ogre. And uh, after that, you say, Eleni, Spana, ten. So that's non-formal education, education in which uh, the, 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 the timing is not that strict. Now, what about informal education? Informal education is the type of education we get by living in society, we get by living in family, we happen upon by our experiences. In fact, sometimes it's referred to as accidental education. That's what we refer to as informal education. All of them, formal, non-formal, and informal education are very, very important aspects of human development and we cannot diminish any of the three. They are all very, very important. Education, we did say, is the process through which important issues are learned and perfected. And the end product of education involves the acquisition of first and foremost knowledge and skills. Very, very important that we make this distinction between knowledge and skills. Knowledge involves knowing what is, but skill involves knowing how to. And these two are very, very important distinctions. Knowing what is, is different from knowing how to. And we need to deal with the two strictly. Like I always said, probably said it on this pulpit a few times, that every one of us here, I am sure, knows that if you put a nail to wood and you hit it with a hammer, the nail will go into the wood. But if you try to do it for the first time, you are more likely to hit your fingernail than the nail. That's the difference between knowing what is and knowing how to. So, but more also important as outcomes of education are that we acquire values, we acquire beliefs, and we acquire habits all through education. So let's look at all these outcomes of education. Let's take some time to look at all these outcomes of education carefully. We talked of knowledge. We talked of skills. We've talked of values. We've talked of habits. We've talked of beliefs. What is knowledge? 
Knowledge, we can say, is com uh, it, it, it relates to the total, totality of the familiarity and awareness of something. You say you, uh, you have knowledge about something, you know the thing, you know about the thing. You are familiar with the thing, you are aware about the existence of the thing. But more importantly is understanding about the thing. Knowledge of something, awareness of something is not as important as understanding about something because it is understanding that makes it possible for you to even infer more knowledge about the thing beyond what is presented to you on the surface. Even though the word knowledge is derived from the word know, we should take account of the fact that the, 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 the notion of knowledge goes far beyond just knowing. It goes to the level of, very, very important level of understanding. Knowing, the knowing aspect of knowledge which gives us acquaintance with or understanding of probably a, a science, an art, or a technique. These are some of the main uh, important groups of knowledge we can have. When we talk of having familiarity or understanding of a science, we are talking about principles around what you can observe. There are certain things that are not consistently observable, but there are certain things that are consistently observable. These are the things that we can study under the ages of science. Science is based on such principles as observability, repeatability, that if you observe it this time, what you find this time is the same thing you will find when you observe it the next time. Falsifiability, the fact that if, if we do it some other way, it will not work, and we can use that to say, yes, this is the only way to do it. That is the area of science. And the issues that we deal with that present us with such facilities are pretty limited. But understanding them, knowing about them, and being able to deal with them gives us a lot of mileage. As for art, we are talking here about aesthetics. That one story is more interesting than another story does not necessarily make the more interesting story true. So we are talking here about aesthetics, about, oh, it feels nice. Uh, you look at a drawing, and it looks very, very interesting. And you look at it, and you look at it, and you say, ah, how does one climb these stairs? Because the stairs are actually going down, and uh, you are approaching it from down up, yet it is coming down. There's this popular, well, not pop, well, still popular though dead, uh, uh, Dutch architect by the name Escher. He specializes in making drawings that are impossible. He draws something and you look at it and you, you, your, your brain almost starts aching because you are trying to resolve the contradictions there. But it, they look nice. So when we are talking about the, when we are talking at the level of aesthetics, there is a totally different level of judgment. And that also is in the uh, area of knowledge. Talking about aesthetics, I mean, we all know Nollywood, African magic. Of course, I, I mean, I think, the, I think the, in the two words, I think the magic is even truer about it than Africa. <laughs> because some of it, I, I can't even recognize my own African, some of it. But as to magic, oh, of course, it's replete with magic. 
And it's interesting. And a lot of people, in fact, there's a whole business model around it. And uh, so, it, 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 it's beautiful. People love it. People are uh, sometimes addicted to it. Uh, a lot of it is not true. Well, at least we know that all the people you find in it don't live in the houses where you find them in the magic. So, that's the area of uh, art. As, uh, techniques, specific ways and manner of getting certain things done. These also falls in the, in the, in the area of what the end product of knowledge, what we get knowledge for. Some of the objects, objectives of knowledge, what we seek to get in knowledge include facts, information, descriptions about things. Facts are basic data about something. They could be either in the form of quantities or in the form of qualities. For example, you say he is 10 years of age as against she is of light complexion. When you say somebody is 10 years of age, you are describing the person by a quantity. Whereas when you say somebody is of light complexion, you are describing the person by some quality. And these are some of the objectives of knowledge in the area of basic data, simple facts. And these form the basis of describing objects at certain important levels, either quantitatively uh, or qualitatively. And by the way, when you say something is qualitative, it doesn't mean it has high quality. It's a common Nigerian error. When you say something is qualitative, what it means is that it is described by certain qualities. Just like quantitative, it is described by certain quantities. So these are some of the objectives of uh, knowledge in which uh, we, we try to find out the quantities or the qualities that describe uh, a certain object or a certain phenomenon. In short, or in summary of these issues of knowledge. Remember, we are talking here about education and we are saying that one of the aims of education is to acquire knowledge and we are trying to explain what knowledge is. And we are saying knowledge has to do with awareness, has to do with uh, uh, knowing, but much, much, much more importantly has to do with understanding such that it is possible to infer from the information you have about something, information which you do not have yet. Let me, let me give a very typical, typical example that I normally give. You see an animal walks across this aisle on two legs. It has feathers. It has a beak. It has wind. What do you call it? Bird. Now what you see is beak, feathers, wings. It walks on two. One of the very, very few low animals that walk on two. Now, even though you have not followed that bird to its nest, you know, just by, know, by seeing the feathers, seeing the beak, you know that it lays eggs. It doesn't reproduce its type. So that is 
that comes from an understanding of how that object behaves. And that is where the kernel of knowledge is, where you are able to move away from awareness, familiarity, acquaintance to the level of understanding where you can make inferences about things you have not directly seen. In general, we can say knowledge refers to the theoretical or practical understanding of a subject. You can understand the subject theoretically, you can understand it practically. And this also uh, implicates what we have said in passing about the distinction between knowledge and skills. So let's look at skill. Now that we've talked about knowledge as one of the things, one of the, what we get out of uh, education, we also get skill out of education. Skill is acquired through experience. The type of education that gives skills is quite different from the type of education that gives knowledge. And that's why when you are in a university or a polytechnic or any level of advanced tertiary education, you have theory and then you have practice. They say you have practicals, even in secondary schools. The theory provides you the knowing what is. Whereas the practicals provide you the knowing how to. And skills are achieved only by practicing, perceiving, discovering, learning. And basically when you learn, what we are talking about is you are getting better at something by doing it over and over and over again. So, from the process of education, we get knowledge. From the process of education, we get skills. Also, from the process of education, we get values. Values. Value, a value is the basis by which the importance of something is determined. Value helps to determine the importance of something. And as human beings, our value informs the principles and standards of our behavior. When we look at an issue, we put some value to the issue. That defines how important that thing is. And that determines how we will relate to that thing. So our values are the principles and standards that define our behavior. Our values are the basis for our judgment of what is important and of what is not. Acquiring the right values for the right environment is non-trivial. It is part of the process of education that gives us the right values, that will give us the right principles, that will allow us to judge correctly in various situations. As Christians, one of the important inputs into the development of our value system is the word of God. And when we miss that, when we mix it up, when we do not give the proper attention to the values or to the inputs that define that value system, then we fall short of, we fall terribly short of our uh, Christian responsibilities. Our values help us to define 
what is worthy and what is not. At a more mundane level, I said earlier on that uh, we, we, um, we can describe objects by quantities or qualities. At another, at, at a, yet, a yet mundane level, so these qualities and quantities that we describe things by are referred to as their value. So if, if, if you have an... Uh, earlier on, I said uh, he is 10 years of age. So if, if we're talking about a person there, we are talking about one of the attributes of that person. That is the person's age. Of course, there are very many attributes of a person. We can talk about the person's weight. We can talk about the person's height. We can talk about various attributes. So we pick one attribute. And we ascribe a value to that attribute on a consistent measurement system such that if somebody is of it has if the value of somebody's age is 11 we know that that one is older than the one who is 10 so there's another level at which we talk of value in that sense in conclusion about value I think we, we, we can get a lot of knowledge from the idea of value by looking at the word evaluate. When you say you evaluate, what you are doing is you are putting value to something. You are determining, you are, you are, you, you are, you are developing a means, hopefully consistent, by which you can say this is the value of this thing and thereby determining whether that thing is worth your while. So we've now talked about knowledge, skills, and values. Also, we get from education beliefs. Beliefs. A belief is something we know from experience, but are not able to communicate with other people, except they also come to that experience. If you have a belief, there is really no way of uh, scientifically testing that belief and making sure that whoever you pass that belief to and does not accept it is foolish. And that is why it is very, very dangerous to fight over religion. Okay, we Christians say that Jesus is the son of God. There are many Nasfat gatherings this morning. And you might get to one of them where you hear, Kobi, Moheni, Kobi. That's a divergence in belief from what we, where we stand. We say Jesus is the son of God, and they say God has no son, and nobody gave birth to God. So these are beliefs. That Jesus is the son of God is a matter of our own experience, and we live by it, and it promotes our well-being. But we are not able to with conviction, we are, to, 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 we are not able to engender conviction in somebody else until that person experiences that themselves. And then we now, come, we now both come to a unity of belief. And when you now talk, they have handles on which they can relate the things you are talking to. We also get beliefs from education, despite the fact that we say that there are experiences we have which we are not able to with some with, that's, that's, we are not able to communicate at certain levels. But because we have experienced the belief, we live by them, living by them constitutes a kind of test of this belief and the results we get living by this belief, continue to convince us that we are holding on to uh, important beliefs. 
Finally, from education, we get habits. We get habits. Habits have to do with the way we live our lives, the things we do often. And they usually evolve into culture. When we have a collective of people who live together and they develop certain habits and they live by these habits, these habits kind of become their culture. We are able to achieve certain important outcomes by upholding certain habits. I've been privileged to get involved in some recent studies that look at how your beliefs, what you believe in, the stands you take, inform your habits, and your habits inform the culture that you find yourself in. And for us as Christians, we need to take very good care of the types of knowledge we acquire, the type of skills we develop, the types of values we accept, the types of beliefs we hold and the types of habit that we form. There are various educational institutions too eager to teach values that are not consistent with our Christian values. And in our quest for education, we must ensure that the values on which the education that we are seeking are based are consistent with our Christian values. Otherwise, when you start getting influenced by foreign value, by foreign value, I mean values outside the word of God. You might find that at the beginning the diversity is almost negligible. If you draw through straight lines from one point and they go in two different directions, as you continue away from that point, you find that the distance that connects the two lines gets larger and larger. No matter how close the straight lines are at the beginning, in fact, at the beginning, they are coincident. They, are, they, all, they both start from one point. And when you move out of that point, you might find that for a long time, the, stru- the two straight lines still seem to touch because there's thickness in each line. But as long as there's a divergence, it's only a matter of time that the difference will show. So that is why we need to be very, very careful about the kind of values we imbibe because ultimately the difference will show. So in a nutshell, that is my understanding of education. The question now is, to our main point, get education, since it is is the only shortcut to success. I think it's instructive for you, for for me, to tell you about myself and how I use education. By training, I'm a scientist. And as a scientist, what I am trained to do is to study phenomena, try and understand 
the principles behind this phenomena such that we can predict their behavior. Because once we can predict their behavior, then we can control what they do. Once you know that by this particular time, this thing is going to be here, then you can go and wait for it there. If you cannot make that prediction, you might be 10 miles away when it arrives. As a scientist, I am trained to observe I'm trained to describe. I'm trained to prescribe. And I'm trained to predict. And as a technologist beyond science, I am trained to control. As a Christian scientist, I use two main methods. Oh, well, let me not say I use. I use one main method. The other one is foisted on me. The first method I use is discovery. I sit down. I spend sleepless nights looking at the phenomenon that I'm interested in understanding. I look at it from under. I look from the side. I, look, I walk around it. I, I take certain tools and use these tools to manipulate the phenomenon. And sometimes after a few years, I get to understand the phenomenon a little at a time. But when you get to a point where you understand the phenomenon very, very well, by the kind of training I have, it is possible to write maybe, for example, a mathematical equation which will explain the behavior of that phenomenon within certain confines. And more often than not, anybody that can make such predictions will get paid for it. Because you are all living in an environment where these predictions are important. The second method in my scientific work, which is not conventional in science, is revelation. There have been times that I have, in my quest for discovery, I've worked hard, I've thought hard, I've thought until my brain starts aching and I don't get any closer to the solution. But sometimes I say, okay, let me take a rest. And I found that many times at that twilight of between being conscious and sleeping into unconsciousness in sleep, the idea just comes. Totally, totally unconnected with what I have been thinking and the way I have been looking at it. And when I am able to conduct myself well and not get overexcited about it and see through it and I sit down to analyze it, there is no way I would have got to that point if I hadn't had that revolution. And there are precedences in history. I mean, um, those who studied chemistry know about the problem of the benzene ring which scientists struggled and struggled and struggled for and they just, just, they just couldn't understand how with the kind of the arrangement of atoms of uh, hydrogen and carbon that uh, uh, material could subsist but the scientist who was thinking about it had a dream saw angels holding hands and it was exactly in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, the, the, the way the benzene ring could be. And he woke up and wrote it down, and that was how the benzene ring was uh, discovered. Because many other hydrocarbons that they were using did not form into rings. They were forming into stretches. And they assumed that all hydrocarbons joined, hydrogen, hydrogen and carbon joined only linearly. But the benzene joining the ring. So that is the alternative to discovery, which is revelation. Now, the reason why I am saying all this is that the revel both the, for, to, 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 to use discovery as a means of 
getting knowledge, to use discovery as a means of solving problems, you need to have a clear understanding of the problem. And that comes only by education in the special area. Now, I believe that anybody can get a revelation as long as you are a child of God. As long as you are connected, you can get a revelation. But if you do not have education, you will not even know that there is a problem that that revelation can solve. You will see the revelation. Sometimes you will dream dreams. You think he's talking about you. He's giving you a revelation about some scientific things. But because you are not schooled in that area, it's useless. And this is why it is important for us to get education. The ultimate of education, the ultimate aim, we've talked about various objectives of education, to produce knowledge, skill, and all that. The ultimate aim is to produce men and women that, will be, that can be useful in society. Men and women that can operate as agents of development. Men and women that understand the environment to the extent that they can, like I said, make observations, describe the environment, make prescriptions about the environment, make predictions about the environment, and thereby are able to control the environment. And it's a divine assignment. Because when God made the heavens and the earth, and he finally made man, what did he do? He rested. The implication here, and before he rested, he said, increase, multiply, subdue, replenish the earth. And heaven, that means heaven made a being that is sufficiently intelligent to work with him as co-creators, to work with him as partners. Then he rested. So for us as individuals, if we do not get, the f get proper education that gives us what it takes to understand our environment and justify God's resting, then we are failing in our responsibilities. And we'll be talking a lot more about this in the second service. So what we are saying here is that education is important. I don't want to go into the use of if you are educated, if you know you will make money and all that. I mean, important, I believe that subsequent uh, teachers in this, during this month of Get Education will touch on that. Of course, I have experience in that, but I think it is important that we set and lay a foundation of what is education, what can it achieve, and why do we need to get educated? Now, in closing, let me address this issue of shortcut again. We've said that education is the only shortcut to success. But what we find is that, there, particularly in our society, in, in Nigeria, people think there is actually to education itself, there's a shortcut. And that shortcut, I, re I describe as certification. There are very many examples of certificated but uneducated people in our society. And it is becoming structural. It is becoming the norm. I have been teaching at tertiary level since 1982. And I cannot but notice the gradual fall in the quality of outputs of our educational systems. And one of the reasons I adduce for that trend is that there seem progressively to be more 
emphasis on certification than education. The objective of certification is to solve the problem that when you look at a person, just meeting a person and having not spoken to the person, you really can't tell how educated the person is. You may be able to guess, but you can't really. So the, the certification solves that problem because when he produces or she produces a certificate, you can then say, ah, this person has gone through this process of formal education. You know, earlier on we said that formal education usually leads to certification. But in our midst today, there are various ways of circumventing the process and getting certifi certificated, not even certified, without education. And we need to avoid that. Part of what promoted that tendency was that there was a time in history when the bulk of educated people were employed by government. And there is this attitude in government that government doesn't really have to work. If you don't believe me, go to secretariat. You will see, I have been to visit a, min, a commissioner for education. And I was in the ante room waiting to see this commissioner for education. And I was beginning to smell Ogbono. Then I noticed there was a stove. Behind, there was a stove behind the table of the secretary. And she was warming her soup for lunch. It's, it's, that is a certain kind of mind. And if you go into an office, not the least the office of the commissioner for education, then you can tell, uh, well, certainly this commissioner smells this Ogbono. And if the commissioner does not feel that there's something wrong about that, then what sort of education do you expect from that kind of environment? So there's a need for us to be watchful about the kind of education that exists in our environment such that we do not fall into the trap of certification even doing our best. Because even doing our best is come to a point now that even doing your best, uh, you, you, are not get, you are not procuring somebody to write your wask for you. You have not procured somebody to write your jam for you. you are not and of course, you know that people do this thing. I met a man who once told me that, ah, I went to university making money from writing exams. I was studying engineering, and I used to go and write mathematics for people in economics. And these things happen. I say, ah, the lecturers know. When we are going to have a very, very stern invigilator, he sends us texts not to come. So these things do happen. I'm now saying now beyond that, I'm assuming that no child of God gets involved in that. And if you do, please repent immediately because judgment is near. But beyond that, the system does not actually provide good education. And I'm talking with the authority of somebody who has been teaching at tertiary, I've been teaching at tertiary education level since 1982 until now. At the moment, I teach in three universities, and I know. So I, 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 I have comparison. I, I teach in federal government universities, I teach in state government universities, I teach in private universities, and I know that the differences are not really significant. Also, in our educational system in Nigeria today, there is an inordinate quest for university education. It is not, it may not be totally politically correct for me with university education to say this, but I say it all the same. Nigeria is a developing country. Objective of university education ultimately is to extend the frontiers of knowledge. What we need in a developing economy is to turn existing knowledge into skills and practice. And our inordinate quest 
for university education continues to produce engineers that cannot operate. Continue to produce uh, graduates of fields of study that are not directly and immediately relevant. I'm not saying they are not relevant, but they are not directly and immediately relevant. We are not producing the men that can take us from where we are to the point where these things become relevant, and that gap continues to exist. So, if you are here and you have gone through university education or you have HND or you have some qualification or the other and you sit down and you reflect and you know that this certificate I'm holding is a lie. Your time has come. There is nothing you want to learn today that is not on the internet. Nothing, absolutely nothing. You will have written text. You will have audio books. You will have videos on YouTube. If you use one, you don't understand it, go to another one, go to another one. By the time you've been to the 10th, and you will get more than 10, of any subject, any topic, any endeavor, by the time you've gone through that, you will understand what you need to understand. Even skills, handwork, crafts, do not be deceived by the deceptive educational system we are running in Nigeria and think because you have a UBSC, you are educated. And think because you have an HND, you are educated. Please seek knowledge because it is lack of knowledge that makes even the people of God perish. Like I said earlier on, I pray and believe that subsequent speakers will come to give you better news about education, teach you how to use education to make money and all that. But I think it is important, very, very important, that at the onset we establish the fundamentals, the foundational principles of education and tell ourselves the home truth about education, the state of education in Nigeria, so that we do not continue to be deceived by the system. More so that there are now alternatives. I'm not saying don't go to university. Go and take the certification. But go and use the available resources that God has now placed at our disposal to justify the certificates you are carrying around. And you will find that if you really, really can justify that certificate, you will hardly ever need to show it. I got a master's degree in 19, I think it was 1989. It was posted to me from England. I didn't know. So two years later, when I visited the U UK, I visited the university I went to and I said, ah, I want to collect my certificate. They said, ah, we posted it to you two years ago. I said, what address? Ah, and the envelope bore university of something, and it was hard. Ah. It was enough telltale, so somebody had stolen it. So, well, they issued me another certificate, and I kept it in my drawer for many, many years until I wanted to do a PhD. They said, Where's your master's degree? That was the only time I have ever shown anybody my master's degree. But what I learned in the program, I use every day. When I finished my PhD, I was out of the country when the convocation was held. And about six, seven years later, I was working as a forensic expert at an election tribunal. And one of the lawyers who had experienced me in one or two other cases and had known that if I presented my evidence, they were done for. 
His strategy was to try to prevent me from presenting the evidence. And the strategy was, you don't have the qualifications you have, you, you claim. So you cannot talk to this court. Can you present your certificates? Well, I managed to solve that problem that day because I told the judge I have sworn on an affidavit that I have the certificates and the so-called learned gentleman is just saying something to throw me off. So when I got back, I decided it was time to go and get my certificate. So I went back and I got my certificate and since that time I had never had to use it again. Yet, I am using the things I learned in the process in my work. And that is what education is all about. There is a vast difference between education and certification. We are putting a bit too much, in fact, too much emphasis on certification. And to redress that misnomer, we have more than enough resources with little expenditure. It just cost you a bit of data and time. You can redress whatever weaknesses you have in your education. It is important. The objective or the overall aim of education, like I said, is to produce men and women that can be development agents. We are a developing country. So there is market for you. Thank you very much. Can we please put us together again for him? I know that, can we get the second mic please? I know that um, Dr. Adubola has been methodolic, methodological. <laughs> where he has actually mentioned salient points that we need, we need to, to take home. And more importantly, that we need to begin to apply to ourselves in our lives and in our businesses. Anybody has a question for, for him this morning? All right, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Um, in the process of education, where does doctrine, where is the place of doctrine and the process of indoctrination? Because it seems it's through the transfer of information to that doctrine and the process of indoctrination comes to be. Any other question? Who has any other question? Asking about, I think he's talking more about church, religious organizations, doctrination, indoctrination. Any other question, please? All right, I think that will be the only question this morning. Sir. Thank you very much. I did, you know, when talking about the objectives of education, we talked about um, knowledge, skills, values, uh, habits. Now, in the area of values, is one of the areas that the issue of doctrine can come. See, at the level of knowledge, there is a relatively high chance of insulation of knowledge from doctrine. This is the, the reason I say this is this. Philosophers of old define knowledge as justified true belief. So really, knowledge started from belief. But, there is a need to justify that belief. And the belief must be justified to be truth. I, I do believe that if I throw up this uh, uh, phone, it will come down. I can justify it to be truth, to be true. I can justify it by throwing it up and letting it come down. But beyond that, I can even justify it theoretically by establishing for you that the earth has a gravitational pull on any object within its vicinity. 
and we can do mathematics and demonstrate that mathematically. So that has now moved from the region of belief to the region of knowledge. So whatever has the capacity to move from the region of belief to the region of knowledge is less likely to involve doctrine and indoctrination. But when we go into the area of values, and that is why I made the point very, very clearly that as Christians, we must be aware of the values of the environment in which we are getting our education. Because it is rather insidious. You, like I said, if you have a departure, two lines, slight departure, and you are moving away from that point, you may find that for years, the two lines may still be touching. But ultimately, they will be separated by distances that will make them not at all looking related. So it is in the area of values we have to be very, very careful and ensure that the values on which our education is based is in conformity with the word of God. I mean, in terms of social engineering, you know, making, uh, uh, building society, building a society that is desired, you know, you determine that this is how we want this our society to be. And you sit down and you plan it and you implement it. I think one of the most successful social engineers in our world today was a man called Hitler. But the values on which his social engineering was based was fundamentally faulted. And the Germans still regret it till tomorrow. That they allowed themselves to implement knowledge based on faulty values. So it is in the area of values that we need to be very, very careful and watch out for the doctrines that underlie the education we are getting. And of course, we, we, have, our, we have our template. We have our anchor. We have the, uh, the, the datum based on which we compare these things. And it's the word of God. And that is why it is extremely important. It is of extreme importance that we are immersed in the word of God. So that whenever such things happen, we can, like Jesus said, when he was faced by such situation, it is written. It is written. It is written. Thank you very much, uh, Tunde. You've raised an issue that has bothered me for some time. And um, you've dwelt on the issue of values. I want you to please comment on the issue that is happening in this country and more so in the U.S. now, where we know that it is written in the U.S. that the state has no religion. And in Nigeria, it's in our constitution that the state has no religion. How true should we accept this, more so as Christians? And when we see what is going on in America and what is happening in this country, can we truly say that the state has no religion? Thank you. And well done. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, when Papa Smith took the microphone, I heaved. But when we said thank you, Tunde, he put me where I was. I said, okay. <laughs> put me where I belong. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. The, 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 the position that the state has no religion is a result of history. There was a time that religion controlled state. There was a time in history that religious con religion controlled state. When a small band 
of Jewish men and women who are following one miracle worker and the miracle worker was crucified and he rose again and they were energized by the power of his resurrection and by the uh, coming of the Holy Spirit on them. They changed the world. But the world resisted until a notable emperor became a Christian, Emperor Constantine. And religion became, I mean, Christianity became the religion of the state. And history tells us that what happened after then was one of the lowest points in, Christian, in the history of Christianity. Because there was a lot of corruption brought into Christianity. There was a lot of uh, uh, misuse of power of the state, misuse of the power that comes from God. And it was out of the realization that that should be avoided, that this idea of uh, a state has no religion uh, came on. My personal opinion is that states should not legislate religion. Because I mean, if it's difficult, it's even impossible to legislate morality, to regulate good behavior, to legislate a lot of the things that religion caters for. So religion is supposed to be a complement to the instruments of state that make for social cohesion. But unfortunately, I get this feeling all the time that the truest religion is a religion in which no human being practices. Because once a human being gets into the religion, they bring human palaver into it. And there are people who engage religion not because they are yearning for God, but because they have seen some advantage in that religion. On this pulpit, somebody, I think he was sitting somewhere around somewhere here, and he came to tell us that we should vote for a certain governor because he sent him to Jerusalem. Yes? Ah, you forgot this. He, it was here. I think he was sitting around here. I was sitting around here. So I, I can remember clearly. He sent that governor, sent him to Jerusalem, barely educated man, and that when he came back from Jerusalem, he was put on the board of the Ibano Polytechnic. So that's the kind of, and I think it was a, Mr. Dewusi who put up his hand and said, we prefer the Muslim in Lagos to the Christian in Ibadan. He said it was in this church that it happened. So that's the kind of muddy water that we get when we allow religion to come into state. At one of the most important situations for, Nigerian, for us Christians in Nigeria today, and excuse me if I'm wrong, is that during the Jonathan regime, the Christian Association of Nigeria got too politicized. And the present government, whenever can talks now, they feel, oh, the rump of the Jonathan government. So as Christians, we are finding it difficult to influence the existing government. In times past, when a body of Christians want to make statements, want to take positions that had political implications, they did it with utmost sensitivity. But during the Jonathan government, we Christians were drawn into that government hook, line, and sinker. And we became apologists for the government. And we were presenting Jonathan as the Christian candidate. These were things that happened at that time that are regrettable. And unfortunately, I am not sure we have repented. And what the word of God says that if my people 
which are called by my name shall first of all humble themselves secondly pray thirdly cease from their wicked ways it is then that I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land I needed to just step out at that point because what pa uh, Pastor Dr. Tunde Adigbola just quoted, as for our three days fasting and prayer program starting tomorrow through to Wednesday, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal the land. Let's put our hands together again for Dr. Arebola this morning. I know our time is fast spent, but it's been an enlightening time. And I think it's a message for us to listen to again, to pick, share. It's already on Facebook. Um, if you search the page, The Bridge Network, you'll find the live stream. So please, let's share it. I think it's a message that should reach as many people as possible. Please, don't take things in isolation as he has said it he has mentioned education gives knowledge gives skills believes values so you have to take everything together because it is your value system that will determine which kind of education you should get do you understand so but like i said i know he has taken his time and he has laid a very good foundation for us this morning. But it's also important for us to listen again and again so that we can grasp as many truths that he has shared with us this morning. Can we package our tithes and our offering um, as we give and honor God this morning so we support what we do in this house? Because giving is important. Giving is part of the injunction, injunction of God to support a vision that we believe in in as much as the vision is doing good. So please, let's package our tithes, let's package our offering as we give this morning. If you also have your Thanksgiving offering to give this morning, you are not waiting for the network service, please let's package that as well as we give this morning. You can use um, other channels of giving, the POS, just call on the ushers for that. Just hold on a bit, just hold on. Uh, you can use the channels of giving the pos just ask the ushers you can transfer to the church's account you can write a check in the name of the church the bridge network as you give this morning father we thank you lord we thank you as we honor you with our seed lord we thank you even for the privilege of life that you have given unto us father we thank you for your word that we have received this morning father we ask help us to internalize this word help us to think over it and help us to apply those words to our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you as we honor you with our seat that Lord, you will indeed honor us in return. Father, we declare every need in this house this morning is met in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask Lord that you, O oh God, you will attend to our ways this day and this month in the name of Jesus. That all that we lay hands upon to do shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Help us to see those things that you have blessed concerning us. And help us and energize us to step and walk therein. In Jesus' name. We do give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just quick announcements um, this morning as we just quickly go for a coffee break. Just have about 15 minutes. Service Network service will start by 10 am so please we'll quickly go for a coffee break and like i said earlier the three days fasting and prayer prayer program is starting tomorrow running through the next three days um the theme is if my people if my people that's from second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 that's the theme for the three days fasting and prayer program and i think it's ample time for us to really come together to pray and to seek god's face concerning our land so we'll go. anybody worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time it's good to see dr damolai in the house this morning i think she is now a full doctorate degree older it's good to see you in the house this morning 
This is your first time in church. Can you please wave your hands if you are worshiping with us for the first time? I want to welcome you quickly this morning. Anybody worshiping with us for the first time? All right. So we'll go for... Okay, thank you very much, my dear sister. Thank you very much for joining us in service. But we'll still welcome you properly during the, during the network service. So we'll go for our coffee break and we'll be back for network service by 10 a.m. <laughs> 